everybody's got pet peeves, because everybody's got something that gets on their nerves. Um, but we're, we're going to start by talking about convincing people of things, because persuasive theory is fun. It's true. So what's the best way to convince someone that you're right and violence is not the answer? Facts. Facts. Excellent. What else? Confidence. Confidence? Okay, so like in, your, in being certain in what you're saying, you are more likely to convince others. That's pretty solid. What else? Being smart. Being what? Smart in general. Being smart in general? That just kind of goes back to confidence. You can fake that. What else? How do you convince somebody that you're right? Evidence. Evidence? Absolutely. Um, so a lot of times in speech class we talk about informative versus persuasive. So informative, uh, we're giving information, instructive, like just here, we're throwing this out there. Versus persuasive, which is tending to persuade, to, con uh, to cause to believe, to convince. And that's really where we are with this. We are, with the pet peeve speech, informing someone informing the audience about our pet peeves, and then convincing them that they should be annoyed too, or that if they're an offender, they should quit it. So why do we persuade people? Why is persuasion such an important thing? To get what we want. To get what we want. Okay, to be a better speaker in general. Why else do we want to persuade people? What do we want to make people innocent? We what? To make people innocent. To make people innocent? Okay, yeah. Lawyers are persuasive all the time. Which we like to be right. As human beings, like we want to be right and we want other people to agree with us. It's like a human need. So when it comes to convincing others, there are some things that we need to do. Um, first of all, state your reasons. So to bring somebody to your side of something, you've got to start with your reasons. Like this, this, and this. Here is why you should believe what I believe. You need to support with evidence and examples. Because it's not just enough to say, well, because. Because why? This is an important one. We don't badger, shout, or belittle. Because persuasion is not verbal aggression. No. And that's a really important thing, and especially in this day and age with, you know, the internet being what it is and all. Um, it is very important that we remember that persuasion is not verbal aggression. Because, yes, you can yell at somebody and you can talk down to them, but you're not actually convincing them. You're not persuading them. They might agree with you just to get you to shut up, but that's not actually bringing them to your side. That's just irritating them. And generally speaking, verbal aggression causes people to dig their heels in further. So when you feel that you're being attacked, you're not going to be persuaded. You're going to stand your ground against whoever's attacking you. So you want to bring people to your side to convince them, not put them on the defensive. Uh, pet peeve, a major or principal annoyance. So your goal in this speech is to convince the audience that they should be annoyed too, and if they're an offender, to quit it. Pet peeve speech is worth 60 points. Uh, it focuses on a speech on a subject about which you have strong thoughts and opinions, something that causes you anger, disturbance, or concern. Your pet peeve can be about an action that you find objectionable or an event you believe infringes on your rights, or just something that's real annoying. Sometimes people take it very seriously, sometimes people don't. It is up to you where you want to go with this speech. Your speech will state what it is you find to be a nuisance and explain three reasons with examples. You need to be between two and three minutes on this speech. So a good speaker knows how to fill the time, but also when to shut up. So make sure that you are filling that time, but not going over. You're gonna deliver this using no more than three note cards. Because one of the goals of this speech, which is 
coming up in a slide here, is that we are delivering, not reading. Uh, the subject matter and commentary must be appropriate for class. Now, there are a couple of things about this. So first of all, first of all, uh, like keep your language choices appropriate. Every now and again, somebody gets real fired up and words slip out that shouldn't slip out during their speech. Don't do that. Secondly, you can't call people out by name. So you could say that like my pet peeve is um, the people who borrow my stuff and then they never return it and when they finally do give it back, they've broken it some way. Like that's a nice general thing. You can't say my pet peeve is Oscar who I loaned my headphones to last week and then he didn't give them back and didn't give them back and when he finally <laughs> did, it had like little ear cut on it. What is that? Like that would be wrong. Don't do that. I didn't really loan Oscar any headphones. It's okay. <laughs> So, like, don't call people out by name. Okay. Uh, and then, and I'm sure this is none of you, but for the sake of making sure I'm clear about this, uh, don't, don't talk about something that's going to make me think less of you as a human being. So please leave any, you know, please, please, please leave any views that end with an ist at home. I don't want to, yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying here. Um, yeah. yeah. Get to Oscar, then. What? <laughs> uh, and last but not least, no podium. You're gonna be graded on. Um, and it seems like a lot, but it's really the exact same thing that you were graded on for the last speech. It's just broken down a little bit more because that's how I think in the grading process. You have an attention getter. You have a thesis. You have reasons, you support your reasons with examples, that's that detail section in the body of the speech. You have a conclusion. Under no circumstance do you end your speech with that's it, the end, I'm done, or the classic, so, yeah. Thank you for listening to me. I'm going to be here all day. And then vocal qualities, eye contact, gestures, poise, and time for a total of 60 points. I want to talk for a second about speech goals. When you do that reflection, or hopefully did that reflection for your personal experience speech, you set a goal for yourself for the next speech. Uh, speech is all about setting goals because you, like, speech is a hard thing to grade because not everyone starts at the same level. It's not like math class where you either get the problem right or you get the problem wrong. Like, that's just not how it works. It's an improvement grade. So, it's based on where you start, what you want to improve on, and how far up you go. I identify things that I think you guys can work on, but you also identify things that you think you personally can work on. I want you to take time and think about what goal you're setting for yourself for this speech and how you're going to get there. You need that personal goal. Then there are some goals that I'm setting for you, some things that I'm going to be focusing on in my feedback, and that I want you to focus on in delivering this speech. So the first one, in terms of content, I want you to make sure that you're clear, and I want you to make sure you're detailed. We're going to talk about that more when we get into the example here in a sec. But specifically, um, people have this tendency with this speech to just give me reasons and be done. You need to explain them, you need examples, you need support, and that's where that detail comes in. In order to reach the time requirement, you have to explain it. So that's one of the things that we're going to be focusing on. And then delivery-wise, we're going to focus on reducing your verbal pauses, the ands, the ums, the sos, the yeahs. And then also being conversational. As I said, uh, you're going to use note cards because we want you to deliver the speech not read the speech. And that's a hard skill. The pet peeve template. To help you prepare for this, it starts with brainstorming. So think about what it is that you want to talk about in your speech, what your pet peeve is. And again, like everybody has something that gets on your nerves. And sometimes it's something serious and sometimes it's something ridiculous. One of the funniest ones I ever had was somebody who uh, was talking about her pet peeve was babies with dirty socks. She's like, you can't walk? How did you get dirty socks? 
She got a point, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so, like, these are, it could be anything. Uh, very popular topics. Last semester, there were a lot of people who, um, customers, Karens, they had issues with Karens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah, as anybody who has a job. Um, roundabouts. A lot of work retail. Roundabouts are, are pretty, uh, pretty popular topics. The student parking lot, also a pretty popular pet peeve topic. We start with brainstorming. Figure out what it is you want to talk about. When you get that topic, then you need to take that topic and write it into the thesis. The thesis is, remember, one complete sentence that says my speech is about without using those words. Because you don't want to say, my pet peeve is... It's conversational. That's, it's not conversational. My pet peeve is... Yeah. Yeah. Then you've got to come up with your reasons. Then you want to take a look at your tone. Because it can be serious, it can be funny, it can be where, what do you want to sound like with this speech? How are you going to be most effective in convincing others? We're going to write an example. We're going to write an example speech, I'm going to give you the example speech. People that don't wear their mask. People that don't wear their masks? Not. Wearing and <laughs> masks, and that actually is uh, a pretty hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. How do we take that concept, just that general topic, not wearing masks, and turn it into a thesis? One complete sentence that takes a stand. <laughs> Sometimes the easiest way to start is to start with whatever you've addressed as the topic, and then turn that into a complete sentence. So, not wearing masks is. I mean, totally. yeah. <laughs> there must be some screws loose. Okay, but I want you to think about this. If your goal is to convince your audience that they should be with you, you can't insult the audience. Masks is harmful to others. That works. Yeah. Aren't you intelligent? Oh Disrespectful. <laughs> All right. What are our reasons? Why is not wearing masks harmful to others? COVID. Potentially spreading a COVID. Spread. Spreading germs. Spread germs. I will say rules for right now, because we're going to focus on in school. Uh, all right, it's in violation of the governor's order, but that's not exactly a law, but it, like, there are penalties. I would say there should be penalties at least. All right. But that's three good reasons. So um, what's our tone going to be? Um, what do we want to sound like in this speech? Semi-aggressive. Or no, just aggressive. Um, they don't want to be aggressive. Persuasive. Then, okay, persuasive how? And taking the people that start writing. But how do, I, how do I want to sound? Ask the question. The way you want to sound is informative. I don't know, is that like a like pass you can do? Passionate? Like you're serious about it. This would be passionate. Okay, so informative and passionate. Next step is we actually build the speech. And I like to say build instead of write. Because writing a speech makes you think that you just sit down and you start putting sentences together. And that's not really how it works. You're putting these different components of your speech together. Um, and for instance, we always tend to write the body of the speech first and then go back and do the introduction and conclusion. Because you've got to build your speech. Writing a speech is like building a house. You've got to have a framework before you can dress it up and plant flowers out front. I like analogies. Our first reason is it spreads germs. So what sort of example or detail do we need to add to that to support it, to back it up, to explain it? Sneezing and coughing spreads germs all over you. Or all over you. Okay. Even in the mistress. Sneezing, coughing. 
uh, and then also aerosol particles, right? Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. oh. Apparently I can't spell aerosol correctly. <laughs> Reason number two, it's disrespectful. So what's an example or evidence or an explanation to back that up? So group safety, group health, and underlying conditions. I mean, is it nationwide, not even yes. nationwide, worldwide pandemic that... I mean, it is a worldwide pandemic. I mean, that's what a pandemic is. Right. Yeah, that's what a pandemic is. So, it would be a pandemic that you're... Right. It's a pandemic. All right, and number three, it's against the rules. So there's a governor's order. And school mandate. Although, honestly, I feel that you guys here do a really good job with the masks. People, people were really worried, you know, starting out. And I was like, the students are going to be better than the adults ever will be. And I think that that has proven true. Or more adaptable to it. Well, and has been working in food service and retail and whatnot throughout the whole thing. It's not new. All right. Next up, I need an attention getter. So attention getters, and when you do the introductions and conclusions exercise after you've got this done, um, you'll have some more to build on that. I need an attention getter. How should I start this speech to draw people in? Here. Feel free to grade me. Okay, I'm going to try and not go over time. That's going to be a problem for me. Two, I was on my way into the grocery store the other day, appropriately masked, because this is 2020 after all. And I was surrounded by people who were either complaining about wearing a mask or wearing their mask all wrong. Under the chin, under the nose, all over the place. And it just sort of struck me. What a problem we have with people not wearing masks. Not wearing masks is harmful to other people. And in order to understand this, we need to take a look at how lack of masks spreads germs, how it's disrespectful to others, and it's just against the rules. First of all, not wearing masks spreads germs. Simply put, the mask collects a of the things coming out of your mouth and nose, which sounds kind of gross, but it does the trick. As we breathe, as we exhale, we have particles. Particles of snot, particles of spit, just general moisture coming out of our faces. And the mask collects that moisture and keeps it from spreading to other people. That's why we need to wear the mask in order to keep other people safe from our aerosol particles. Because all too often, people are transmitting the disease and they don't even know that they have it. By the time you have symptoms, you could have infected so many people. And that's why the masks are so important. Secondly, it's disrespectful. Simply put, we need to wear masks, not just for ourselves, but for others. We don't want to transmit that disease to other people. And assuming that your health is the only one that matters is disrespectful to others. People have all sorts of underlying health conditions that we can't know when we just look at them. And if we're not keeping our own germy particles to ourselves with the masks, we might be infecting them. And no one wants that on their conscience. It's important that we keep masks to show respect for other people. Lastly, not wearing a mask is against the rules. The governor of Indiana has issued a mask order and started a social media campaign to mask up. And not following those rules, well, that's in violation of the law. And in this instance, this law was created to help keep us safe. Furthermore, even here at Southport High School, the rules state that everyone needs to be wearing a mask. Over the nose, even. So because it spreads germs, because it's disrespectful, and because it's against the rules, not wearing a mask is a really bad choice. We didn't 
see this pandemic coming and we didn't know what was going to happen, but here we are living with it and making the best of it. In order to help us all stay safe and healthy and get through this pandemic, we need to mask up. So please, mask up. I would lose points for time because I went over. How many points? You lose one point for every 30 seconds under or over. Oh, that's not bad. It's not bad. Did you All right. So you would have got 59 points. Well, I mean, well, did I have an attention getter? Yeah. Grocery store. Did I have a clear thesis? Yeah. Did I give you my reasons? Mm -hmm. yes. Did I support those reasons with examples? Yeah. Uh, yes. This examples part is where people get a little hung up. They want to tell me the reason and then they don't always want to explain it completely. Make sure you're giving examples. Did I have a conclusion with a call to action? Uh, vocally, how was I doing? Eye contact? Work the room. Gestures? I over gesture. Poise? Nice and tall, kept my feet planted. Time? Lost it. Do you have a feel for how this works? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a speech in five minutes. I am a trained professional. I can put that together like that. I can do it with half a card. You are not yet trained professionals. And that is why it is so important that you follow the steps, complete the template, do the introductions and conclusions activity, and come to class next week ready to speak. A lot of people with the personal experience speech were not particularly prepared when they came to class and just threw something together very quickly. And for the personal experience speech, you can get away with that. For this, you cannot make sure that you prepare.